Hi YouTube, welcome back to Interest Experiences. I get a little angrier in this video and I talk about my genitals and this is definitely gonna be the longest video yet, so you've been warned. Cut to intro. Today we're continuing our conversation from last week where we're talking about surgeries that happen on AIS people. Last week we talked about gonadectomies, so if you haven't seen that video, I'll post a link right here. But today we're going to be talking about two other surgeries, vaginoplasties and clitorectomies. Again, I'm not a doctor or a scientist, nor do I represent all intersex people. I'm just one intersex person talking about my intersex experiences. So the second surgery I'm going to talk about is a vaginoplasty. A vaginoplasty is described as a surgery to create or repair the vagina. So let's talk about vaginas for a second. Did you know there are actually many parts to the vagina? Most most people know about the lower portion, that's what we think of when we talk about vaginas, the vaginal canal. But do you know there's actually an upper portion too? As a baby in the womb, the uterus, which looks oddly like a bowl, grows down to meet the lower portion, the vaginal canal, and that forms the cervix. So together, the uterus and the cervix create the upper portion. So when someone like me doesn't have a uterus, that also means we don't have a cervix, we just have the lower portion of our vaginas, which can be shallow or deep, it just depends on the person. The medical term for this, which I hate, is called a blind pouch vagina. I mean, seriously. A blind pouch? What the fluff? Don't talk about my vagina that way. Ew, no, how is that in any way sexy? No, oh, hey, wanna come over here and hang out with my pouch? Ew, no, gross. It's my vagina. If someone's missing like a part of their ear or something, it's not like we come up with a whole new offensive term to call it just because there's part of it that's not there. Cause that would be weird. Not like I'm bitter or anything, but if you're a doctor and you're watching this video, Please stop talking about my vagina like it's some weird purse or something. Anyway, so a lot of doctors assume that because I just have the lower portion of my vagina, it is inadequate for sexual intercourse. And I don't know why my doctor just became British, but we'll roll with it. Anyway, so because they assume it's inadequate, they try to operate on it via a vaginoplasty. Now, full disclosure, I've heard plenty of trans girls have been very happy with their vaginoplasties. And I'm sure there are intersex people who I haven't talked to who have been happy with theirs too. And I'm really not trying to discount anybody who's had the surgery with informed consent and anybody who wants to get this surgery. Everyone deserves the right to do what's best for their body. Maybe some people do actually need to have a vaginoplasty. But the reason for that is adult male doctors will look at the vagina, usually of a teenage girl, and wonder whether an adult male penis can fit inside. Like, seriously. How gross and presumptive and heteronormative is that? It's not okay at all. The thing is, vaginas stretch. That's what they do. They stretch to have babies come out of them. They stretch to put things inside of them. They're the same exact tissues that penises are made of, which will also stretch and compact. That's my, this is a penis, it's, yeah going with it. So wouldn't it just make sense that vaginas should just be stretched a little bit if you want to put things in there during sexy time? Yeah, it would. And you can actually do that. It's a process called dilation where you take what I describe as medically looking dildos and you insert them in the vagina as a way to stretch them over time. And that can be a very long and painful process, but in the end, a lot of times you still have to do that if you have a vaginoplasty. Actually, I think every time you still have to do that. So. If you're going to have to do that anyway, why not try that first before deciding whether or not to have a vaginoplasty? It's a process you can make fun and it's definitely worth it if you want to put something in there someday. But we can talk about dilation in another video. For me, dilation was offered as a last resort after I refused surgery. Why is that okay? Why is it that surgery is our only option until we refused and then we're offered a less invasive option? The only reason I refused was literally because I didn't have time. My doctor tried to pressure me into having surgery about three weeks before I was going off to my freshman year of college on my own by myself. Like I did not have time for this surgery and the recovery and the whole process. I just didn't have time for it. I think my doctors did have my best interests at heart. She was just scared of me going off to college and having sex with big scary men, which is why she ended up giving me dilators. I feel like I'm really lucky because I was able to escape that surgery, but a lot of my intersex friends aren't able to escape that surgery. And many of them have had some horrifying things happen to them because of it. 
that's a really delicate place to be operating on and you really have to know what you're doing. A lot of times doctors don't. Sometimes it's even been their first time doing this surgery. How is that okay? On top of that, the tissues you use have to be very appropriate. For me, they were going to take a skin graft from my thigh and use that to kind of build a vagina, but I've heard that that works to varying degrees. I'm not sure, but um, they've also taken colon tissue as the tissue, and I've heard they even used the cheek tissue as a way to build the vagina. So they're experimenting with a lot of different things, but the doctor shouldn't be experimenting on people's genitalia and trying what works. Like, that messes up that person's genitalia for the rest of their life. Not to mention that the when tissue is cut, it becomes scar tissue, which means there's a loss of sensation. So that means that people now have loss of sensation in a place where you generally want to have sensation. Please don't think I'm shaming anyone for having the surgery because that's not what I'm doing. I just don't think it's right for doctors to be doing these kind of surgeries without full informed consent. Personally, I'm glad I didn't end up going through with it after hearing the horror stories of some of my intersex friends, but that's just me. Again, I'm sorry this video has been so long, I just have one last surgery to talk about. I know this can be really hard stuff to hear, so thanks for sticking with me this far. The last surgery that gets forced on intersex people is called clitorectomy, which is the removal, the partial removal, or the reduction of the clitoris. Does that sound like genital mutilation to anyone? It is. We call that intersex genital mutilation, and it happens legally in this country to this day. Why? There's literally no health reason. These surgeries typically happen on beautiful intersex babies who are born with ambiguous genitalia, and I'm using air quotes because what the hell? Blind pouches and ambiguous genitalia? How is this okay terminology to use to talk about our bodies? The term ambiguous genitalia is actually pretty offensive to many people, obviously, and the best way I've heard to describe it is intersex genitalia. But frankly, we just don't have language in our society to talk about bodies that are different or outside the binary. Doctors will use this term when they think someone's genitals aren't normal, AKA they can't tell if it's a penis or a vagina. But it's not like there's some weird, ambiguous blob where someone's genitalia should be. Besides, what does normal genitalia look like anyway? Everybody's genitals are different. No person's genitals fit neatly into a box, but doctors think they should because of society's ideas around masculinity and femininity. Femininity. So then the doctors think it's their job to normalize this poor baby's beautiful genitals. If it's too big to be a clitoris, but not big enough to be a penis, they cut it off. How is that okay? I can't talk about what it's like to have this done to me, but if you remember from the BuzzFeed video, my friend Pigeon now has an intersex YouTube channel where they talk about their experiences, so you should go check them out, if you know what I mean. I'll put a link right here. Again, I'm sorry for this huge dump of information, and I'm sure I seemed angrier in this last two videos than I normally am and will be, but I'm not going to apologize for that anger because we all should be angry about this. These surgeries have to stop. Now these three surgeries aren't the only surgeries that happen on intersex people, so I'll be talking more and more about different surgeries later on in this series. Doctors have done some weird things to intersex people's bodies for the sake of science or for their own curiosity, really. And so as I continue, I'll address some of those in later videos. As always, thanks for sticking with me through this. If you learned something in this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell me how you feel about it in the comments below. What are you gonna do? Please don't start a witch hunt on all doctors, but let's figure out some constructive ways we can make these surgeries come to an end. If you wanna see more intersex videos like this, please hit subscribe and I'll see you next week. XOXY. Ooh.